about it. I'm going to read you about a preacher here and a, and a king. A king. And um, King uh, Ahab and King Jehos- and Jehoshaphat. And in verse 1, we're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 18. Now Jehoshaphat, verse 1, had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity, they, all, they worked together, with Ahab. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people is thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. We're going to go fight this war. Everybody stay still now. All right. Verse 4. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord. So let's ask God what He wants us to do. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together, look at it, of the prophets, four hundred men. He got these four hundred well-known preachers together and asked them what Bible they should use. And every one of them said the NIV. They don't say that, but I'm going to give you the point here. Four hundred men and said, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up! For God will deliver it into the king's hand. Jehoshaphat was a little bit nervous about that. And said, Is not there here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Verse 7, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Well, really, there is one old guy. And he pastors some independent Baptist, premillennial, fundamental, Bible-believing, King James only, one of them old crazy people. But I don't want to, I'd rather not even include him. Look at what he said. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. It don't matter if he tells us the truth, I just don't like him. It don't matter if what he says is right, I just can't stand his attitude. It don't matter if what he says is right, he, he just rubs me the wrong way. I hate him. Boy, that's an honest confession, ain't it? He said, all these prophets tell us He said, but you reckon we better find a man of God? He said, well, there's one down here, but I hate him. Look, he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Emei. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Emei. I said, well, go ahead and let's have him in for a few nights. Let's... Let's go ahead and let him preach one night of camp meeting or something. Uh, bring him in here and see what he says. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat of Judah set either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they set in a, void, a place at the entering of the gate of Samaria, and the prophets prophesied before them. Stop right there. Hold your finger. Here they are. They're sitting in their royal robes. They're up on the king's throne. And the prophets are saying, I'm going to tell you right now, King, we'll go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For thus saith the NIV and the RSV and the ASV and the new ASV and all of our prophets, it's going to be well with you, King. Hallelujah. God's on our side. We're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed, King. We're going to be blessed. And deep down inside they said, well, uh, we better call that one other preacher and see what he said. Verse 10. And Zedekiah the son of Chenei made of horns of iron. And said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so. Push Syria until they be consumed. We're going to win. Praise God. It's days of prosperity, King. Uh, King uh, Ahab, we're going to make it. Hallelujah. 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 We're going, to, we're going to win this battle, King. Yes, yes, we shall win it. And you can be a part of it. Uh, send us your tithes and offerings this week. Help us to fight Ramoth Gilead. Praise God. It's wonderful to be. And we even have a praise band. And we're all going to win this one. I better hush right there. I'm getting all done. Uh, but anyway, if I was writing a story, that's what they are. I mean, they'd have somebody come up and a little smoke would come up out of the out of the all of there and they go, Ramoth Ramal Gilead dead, Ramoth Gilead will be dead, Ramoth Gilead. Ramoth Gilead. We're going to conquer them today. We're going to be like that. That's what I'd do if I 
And that's what they did. That same old spirit. <laughs> that same old spirit, Lord, they had them out there. And I mean, they had the TV cameras in there. I mean to tell you, it's looking bad for Ramoth Gilead. And buddy, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, they said we're going to prosper. The King, Lord going to deliver it. Verse 12. Everything went fine. Old Micaiah got his chance to preach. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, Say it! Behold, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one assent. Let thy word, he's talking to Micaiah, be like one of theirs. You want to pastor a mega church, Micaiah? Quit talking negative. Brag on them. Speak positive. God is good. Don't go up there and say stuff's bad. You want to get some more Micaiah? Speak like they speak. Amen. Ain't that what they said? That's what it said. They said, now Micaiah, if you're going anywhere in your ministry, you're going to have to chill out here a little bit, boy. Turn some of them rough edges. That's what a guy said about me one time. He said, I've already counted me. He said, now Danny, he said, boy, he said, Danny, you've got, you've got the makings of a great preacher. He said, you just need to go get some of them rough edges knocked off of you a little bit. And uh, probably at that time I minded it a little bit. Uh, but I tell you, that's what they told on my cat. They said, just, just smooth it out there a little bit, big boy. Just trim your message a little bit. Don't you can't get on TV and radio and start saying, this is a sin and that's a sin. I mean, good night. Everybody else, all the other preachers say it's okay. All the other, every preacher on the radio uses NIV. Everyone on TV uses it. Don't be such a stick in the mud. That's what they told him. Look at verse 12. They said, let your word be like theirs, and speak thou good. Look at verse 13. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. Amen. He didn't say what I learned in seminary I'll speak. He didn't say what Dr. So-and-so told me I'll speak. He didn't say I read this in a charisma magazine and that's what I'm going to speak. He said, whatever my God saith, that will I speak. That's what I'm going to say. Boy, I tell you, that's what we got in this generation. We need some preachers that will say, whatever God said in His Word, that's what we'll speak. Amen. All right, let's see what happened. And he come to the king, verse 14. Micaiah will go to Ramoth Gilead and battle, or shall I forbear? He just messing around with me. He said, go up. You're going to do anyway. You might as well go up and prosper. They'll be living in your hand. And they said, now we know that you're not even preaching. You're just, you're just telling us that because we fussed at you and you don't want to cause trouble. And verse number middle said, go up and you'll be delivered. And the king said, verse 15, how many times do I have to tell you that you say nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And uh, uh, and he said, all right. You want the truth? And he said, yeah, I want the truth. Should we go up to Ramoth Gilead and fight them? Are we going to whip them all? And old Micaiah said, I'm going to tell you one thing. Ha! I saw all Israel's sheep scattered on the hills. And he said, we're going to kill you, every one of you. And he said, the king's going to die. And look at that boy. He, made a, he had a bad prophecy. They have no master. Let them return. And look at verse 17. The king come back and he said, didn't I tell you? Did I not tell you that he would prophesy not good to me but evil? He said, I told you. I told you. Every time I go hear that preacher, it's just negative, 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 negative. Negative. He never tells me how great I am. He never tells me how sweet I am. He says, I'm bad, I'm sinning, I'm bad, I'm sinning. Everything's a sin, everything's bad. I told you that I couldn't stand to hear him preach because all he talks about is bad things. And look here what he said. Verse 18. And uh, verse 18, he said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne and everybody standing around. And the Lord said, who? Here's some weird Scripture, y'all. Anybody can explain all this Scripture to me? I'll, I'll buy you something to eat. Here's some hard Scripture, and I love it. And i got my ideas about it, but you help me with this. He said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, the Lord said. Verse 19, That he might go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. The Lord said, Who's going to entice that crazy backslid king to go up there and get killed? And one spake after this manner, another spake after that manner. Look at here. Then came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said, wherewith? Here's a spirit talking to God back and forth. 
Somebody said them spirits talk. Yeah, they talk. The Holy Spirit talks and evil spirits talk. How many of you ever had an evil spirit talk to you? You don't have to raise your hand. Most of us in here, the evil spirits talked to you before, ain't he? And told you stuff. And the Holy Spirit has too. And look here what he said. And the Lord said, wherewith? Verse 21. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. That's a strange Scripture. Evil spirit getting permission from God to go mess up a king and entice him to go get killed. Verse 22, Therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. How's that for some heavy doctrine? Come down just have a uh, How that's for some heavy doctrine? The Lord hath put a lying spirit. All them preachers told him to go up and prosper and he'd be all right. And God allowed that evil spirit to seduce every one of them preachers. Now that means if a person wants to be seduced, God will allow them to be seduced. And if a person wants the truth, that's what separates people in this world. Not your education. Not your talent. Not your ability. What separates people in the world is people that want the truth and people that don't. If you want the truth, God will get it to you. And if you want to believe a bunch of junk, God will allow you to be deceived and believe a bunch of junk. Anybody in this world that gets down on their knees and said, if there's a God up there, if you'll give me the truth, I'll believe it. God will get the truth to them. He did Cornelius. And he got these people to be deceived. Isn't that weird? And verse 23, Zedekiah the son of Chenei came and said, and smote Micah up on the cheek. That was his love offering. Hit him in the mouth and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord for me to speak to thee? And Micah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day thou go to the inner chamber to hide yourself. And the king of Israel said, Take ye Micah, carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash the king's son. And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fella in prison. Some of the greatest preachers that's ever been on the planet have been put in prison. That's why Micaiah like was put in prison for what he believed. You say, boy, if I'm a preacher and God will use me and I'll do great things and I'll get rich and own a big house, so that, probably not. If you really preach the truth, you might wind up in jail before it's over with. Amen? Micaiah was put in prison. 400 prophets came out. All right. What do you prophets think we ought to do? Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, King. Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. Go up to Ramoth Gilead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're all going to prosper. What do you say, Micaiah? Thus saith the Lord. You're going to go up there and they're going to kill every single one of you. Kill him. Get him out of here. He speaks negative. All he talks about is negative. Why can't you be positive? You ain't going to build no mega church. You're not going to build no mega church till you drop the name Baptist and drop your convictions and get you some contemporary music and drop your King James Bible and have no dress standard. You're not going to do it. And Micaiah said, I'm not called to build a mega church. I'm called to preach what thus saith the Lord. And let God do the work. Say amen right there, folks. That's right. And it got him thrown in prison. And he prayed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction. Verse 27, Micaiah said, If you return in peace, the Lord ain't spoken by me. So King, he said, Jehoshaphat said, they went up to fight. Micaiah told him, he said, all right, if you don't believe I'm telling the truth, if you come back down here in peace, I'm a false prophet. If you get killed, you'll know I was telling you the truth. Amen? We'll just see, bless God, who's the false prophet and who ain't. And by the way, people, that's the way it's always been. You know a real man of God because what he says comes to pass. It's always been that way. And old Micaiah, 
He didn't mess around. There is nothing in this world that will take the place of old leather-lunged man of God preaching that but nothing's better for your kids. Nothing's better for your marriage. Nothing's better for your home. Nothing's better for your life. That old-fashioned Bible preaching from God's man. You ain't going to improve on that right there. Amen. One man said, well, I want to take my kids where they have a lot of activities. Great. I love activities. But I tell you, you better have them where the old-fashioned Bible preaching is. Look here what happened. Verse 29. They come out and said, I'll disguise myself and go out to battle. So the king of Israel disguised himself. Verse 30. King of Syria commanded the chariots of the, uh, that they were with him, saying, Fight you not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, 31, when the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. And Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. See, he got right with God, and the Lord spared him. It came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thine hand out that carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the evening. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. With that introduction, I want to preach tonight on why people hate the preacher. Long introduction, short message. Amen. So you can breathe now. I, a lot of times I'll go somewhere and preach, and I'll preach a long, I'll preach sometimes longer than you do here at home church, and I'll preach a long time, and I'll somebody over there saying, come on, don't stop now! And then I'll hear other people saying, shut up, you idiot. He was about done. Uh, you said that. So you got some likes it and some don't. Yeah. Amen. Some want you to shut up. Some want you to go on. Some like it hard. Some like it soft. But I'm telling you tonight, we ought to give you just what God wants you to have. I want to say tonight, why did the man say, I hate him? He said, there's one preacher over here that we ain't heard yet, but I hate him. Isn't that awful? Isn't that awful? Now, if you were back in those days, you would say, 400 prophets of Baal, they've been to seminary, they've got their degree, they have a doctor's degree, they have this, they're well respected in the community, they have a retirement plan, they have a nice church that gives them a parsonage, they have a good salary, they go to preacher's meeting, they are right. And there's one down there, I hate him. And put him in prison. And all them had a lying spirit, and he was God's man. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you tonight, things ain't always like the world sees them. And what the world many times sees as a success, God sees as a failure. And what the world sees as a failure, many times, is a success. I, I'm going to prophesy right now, and I believe I'm right. I'm going to tell you one of these days when we get to heaven, when we get up there to heaven, it's not going to be like we think it's going to be. We think, well, the Lord will take these great well-known preachers and they'll be at the front of the line. Let me tell you, when we get to heaven, God's probably going to pull up some old missionary over there that nobody's ever heard of. He didn't go around and get support. Supported his own family and moved to a foreign country and died! trying to get people saved. And God's liable to say, this man deserves honor. He's liable to pull out some grandma out of spruce pine somewhere that nobody ever knew about, hadn't, had, didn't have no teeth, and worked hard for her family. Her husband lived like the devil and come in and beat her and stayed drunk, but she stayed on her knees and prayed the Holy Ghost down on her kids. And God called her boys to preach. And they went off somewhere winning soul. I'm telling you, man looketh upon the outward appearance, but God sees things different. Don't you ever judge something by its size and by its glitter and by its success. That's not always a sign. Listen, sometimes Jesus had 5,000 and sometimes He had 12 and sometimes He had one. But I'm telling you tonight, God, God bless Micaiah. He was the preacher. And I'm going to preach on why people hate the preacher. Number one. People hate the preacher because they, the people, have wicked intentions. They say, he won't tell me nothing good, but every time I go hear him, 
It's something bad. Something bad. Something bad. Used to bother me. Still does. I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll have a hard message on my heart. And I mean, I'll have something like, I mean, I just, just say some certain sin or something. And it's burning in my heart. And I'll get up. And about that time, somebody will walk in that door. And somebody tell me, they say, Brother Danny, my brother's here. My cousin's here. Please, please, I hope you don't preach on. And it's already what I planned on preaching on. And you think, oh, Lord. And you think, Lord, did you just do this to me for a dirty trick? You know what it is sometimes? Sometimes God's doing them just like He did here. I hate Him. Every time I go hear Him, it's like probably God ringing that old boy's bell and ringing His name, calling His number. Amen? Yeah. Have you ever thought, every time I go to play, church, they preach, it might be God just telling you, trying to tell you something. That's why you hate the preacher. Come on, listen, listen, brother, if you're selling liquor and the preacher gets up and preaches on it, he's not going to be your favorite person. I hate him. He never tells Tells me nothing good. You know why? Cause you're living like the devil. That's why. Amen. I've been listening to a lot of preaching lately. Me and Kelly, listen, I, I know she's got a lot of good points. And somebody asked me one time, they said, why in the world uh, did, did, did I choose her to marry her? You know, and everything. I said, she's got a lot of points you don't see. I mean, you don't find many women that like hard preaching. I mean, she'll listen to Ruckman and Phil Kidd, brother, and there ain't many women can do that. There ain't many men got enough guts to do that. Amen? Maybe she's just faking. <laughs> but she's getting it. I mean, I can't she'll be listening to us. Amen. That kind of preaching ain't going to hurt you. That's good for you. You ought to find some preaching that just goes against your grain and listen to it once in a while. It's good for you. It's good for you for a preacher to rebuke you once in a while. It's good for a preacher to get down and hammer on what you're guilty of. It's good for me to get rebuked. It's good for you to get rebuked. I hate him. Hate him. Well, I wonder why. I wonder why you hate the preacher. Amen. Old gum bumper. That's what somebody called him. I'm going to go hear old gum bumper. Every time I go here, get right with God. 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 That's right. Get right with God. Number two. You know why people hate the preacher? People hate the preacher because he won't compromise just to please them. They want him to say something is all right when it's not all right. There's something wrong with a preacher that nobody hates. Old Daniel Webster said one time, they said Daniel Webster, the great man, used to sneak off out once in a while and he'd go to this little old country church where this guy just preached hard as he could. And they asked him, they said, why do you go to that little old country church? And he said, because every time I go down there, I leave not feeling good about myself. He helps me. He challenges me to live right and to do better. Listen, people. If you got a brain in your head, you, when, when you go hear a great speaker, you go away impressed with him. When you go hear God's man, you go away unimpressed with yourself. Amen? When you go hear a great preacher, you at least say, man, ain't he something, man, he's something, ain't he great up. When you go hear God's man, you start, you go out saying, I'm going to have to do better. Lord have mercy, God spoke to my heart. That's different. That's different. I remember one time, I preached a camp meeting, and I took Corey, I don't know if she remembers this, but she was, uh, oh, I don't know how old she was, maybe, maybe 13 or 14 with me one night to Charlotte, and there was a big crowd. Big crowd. And me and this other guy was preaching. And this other guy got up and preached, and he did good. I mean, I, I like the preacher. He's a good, good message. But he preached about giving more money and giving more money, giving more money. And, uh, and he had people, they had a funny offer. They'd come down and they'd just lay a dollar bill on the offering, on the, on the, on the table, lay a ten dollar bill here, lay a five dollar bill here, and lay a dollar bill here. And there was money all over the altar. When he got through, there was money literally all over the altar. And they took it up. That's good. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And I had a hard message on my heart that night, and I got up and preached. And I'm telling you, I preached my heart out. 
And we had God moved in there and people got right all over the place. And when we was living, she was about 13 or 14 and we stopped to get something to eat or something. She said, Daddy, that's sort of funny when he got preaching, uh, the, the altar was full of money. When you got through preaching, the altar was full of people. And I took that as a compliment. Yeah. And I said, that's why, right. that's what I'm after. Yeah. That's what I'm after. There ain't nothing wrong with taking up an offering. You got to do it. But I'm telling you, God's man is after your heart. Yeah. Hey, if it gets your heart, God will get you money. Right. Say amen. He's after your heart. Yeah. If you get your heart right, nobody will have to give you, I fuss at you to give your money. If your heart is right, you'll put your tithes in that offering plate and an offering and thank God for the privilege of doing it. If your heart ain't right, there ain't nothing nobody can do for you. Amen? If your heart ain't right, you'll make up excuses. You'll blame the church. You'll, I hate him. That's why people hate the preacher. He won't compromise to please them. Take him away and put him in prison. Years ago, there's a great preacher in this country named Lester Roloff. And everybody here ought to be acquainted with the ministry of Lester Roloff. If you ain't, you should be. You're cheating yourself. He's still on the radio. On some of these old radio stations, the Family Alder Program, you can get him on the Internet, you can get him on CD, on DVD, his great sermon, Dr. Law and Dr. Grace. Lester Roloff had more common, ordinary, human, common horse sense than most preachers ever thought about. Full of it. I mean, brilliant man. Run those girls' home and boys' home down in Texas and got put in jail. I mean, many times stood before a judge and they literally put him in jail. Jack Howes and all them big, the big churches would raise thousand dollars, help him pay lawyer fees. And Lester Roloff said, I'm going to teach these kids to serve God and love God. If I get arrested for that, then I just so be it. He was like a modern day Apostle Paul. Lester Roloff stood before a judge one day. And that circuit judge was, court judge was going to give him a sentence. And old Lester Roloff looked at him one time and he said, One of these days, buddy, you're going to stand before the judge of all the earth to a judge in a courthouse. And I'm going to tell you something, buddy. They're scared of him. They're scared of him. If you're, you got a, you got the internet, look up. Uh, Dr. Law and Dr. Grace and sermons by Lester Law. You can't get much preaching by these bunch of sissified preachers of this generation. Thank God there was some old men. And thank God they are still some. I'm telling you, some of them old men had more guts in their little finger than this crowd does in their whole body. Lord have mercy. He won't compromise to please them. John Bunyan. God's man, he wrote the book Pilgrim's Progress. Pilgrim's Progress is probably one of the three greatest books ever printed on planet earth. The three most important books printed on planet earth, number one, the King James Bible, number two, Fox's Book of Martyrs, and number three, uh, Pilgrim's Progress. As far as Christian heritage, they're in the top three. The King James Bible, of course, is number one by far. And I'm going to tell you what, old John Bunyan was in prison, and they put him in prison for preaching. And they went down there and buddy, they, prison wasn't like it is. Wasn't like it is now. Listen, some of the prison life now is better than what rich people had years ago. We have a young man back there that works in prison. Raise your hand back there. But I saw him go. I said something about being in prison. And uh, I was just joking. I ain't never been in prison. I've been, I've been in prison, but not in prison. I mean, I've been in one, but not more than an hour. Somebody bail me out. No, no, I, I've never been arrested or anything like that. But I'm telling you, buddy, they put John Bunyan, when they, when they put you in jail then, buddy, you go to sleep, rats eat on your toes. You didn't call your lawyers. Wasn't none. Wouldn't do you no good, no way. They give you bread and water. Stale bread. Stinking water. And they come to John Bunyan, and they said, if you'll just quit, street preaching and quit doing what you're doing, we'll let you out and you can go be with your wife. And John Bunyan looked back at him and he said, you let me out today, I'll preach tomorrow. And he said, stay there and rot. And that's what my cow did. Can I say something to y'all? We have the biggest bunch 
of sissified baby Christians in our generation. The least little thing and you're ready to quit. God didn't do every little old thing you wanted Him to. This didn't work out for you. That didn't... Listen, I can tell you a string of stuff that long ain't worked out for me. So what? He never promised us a rose garden. We got put in jail back in the old days. Our forefathers got their heads cut off for doing what I'm doing tonight. They hate the preacher because he won't compromise with them. I'm going to tell you, old Micaiah, he looked at him and he said, go up to Ramoth Gilead. All these other 400 prophets had their NIVs. And they said, go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. What was yours? He pulled out the King James Bible and he said, go up to Ramoth Gilead and you're going to get your head cut off. And they said, well, one of them is translated wrong. And he said, I'll tell you what, we're going to find out, ain't we? He won't compromise with them. Number three, people hate the preacher because they can't control him. People hate a preacher they can't control. You see them big shots and people with money and high society women, they can control the news media. They can control the music industry. They can control the businessmen downtown, but they ain't going to control that preacher. They can control the sports world. They can control the commercials, but they ain't going to control that preacher. They tried that on J. Frank Norris. There's you one to study. Everybody in here ought to be familiar with the ministry of J. Frank Norris. You don't know where the roots of every major independent Baptist work in America can be traced back to J. Frank Norris in Texas. He was the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas, right outside of Dallas, and Temple Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan at the same time. The two largest churches in America, he was their pastor at the same time and went back and forth by train. You talk about a character. That old boy, they threatened to burn down his house, tried to kill him. They had a lynch mob downtown one day. They was going to hang him down the streets of Fort Worth. I mean, that was back in the cowboy days. Norris went down. They said, you better not go downtown, preacher. There's a mob down there waiting for him. He said, oh, really? Where are they at? Tell me where they're at. They went, here he goes. Right down there in the middle of them. Jumps up on the platform they was going to hang him on. And a revival breaks out. People start getting saved. He had a revival in the courtroom one time. And they wound up saying, give me that old time religion. And people was getting right. They scared of him. They said the district attorney, the district attorney in Fort Worth said, we'll run him out of town because he fought the liquor industry. When's the last time you heard a preacher on FM radio get on and preach a sermon against yeah. alcohol and liquor? You ain't going to hear it no more. Yeah. Now, was them old preachers wrong? Are we suddenly enlightened and they oh well, liquor really don't mean liquor and wine don't really. It's all right. Well, I, well, they was all wrong and this modern day bunch of compromisers is right. I don't believe so. Good old Norris preached on that stuff, buddy, and they put him up there and they said, we're going to hang you. We're going to kill you. And buddy, I'll tell you what they done. They said, the district attorney said, I'll run Norris out of town. And he wrecked one night. A train hit him and splattered his guts all over the train track. And one of the deacons went down there, scraped up part of his brains off of the highway and put them in a jar and brought them to the preacher. And he set them on the pulpit that Sunday night and preached on Thou art weighed in the balances and found woman. Well, I'm telling you, man, them people were tough back in them days. What do you think would happen if I brought the district attorney's guts and put them on the pulpit? And now, you know, you know what's wrong with us? We are a soft, yeah. mellowed out, bunch of backslid Christian in our generation. And I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying, back in them days, boy, I'm telling people, it was rough. They were rough. Lord, they, that all the, the Baptists in Texas got mad at him. Because he preached to him, John R. I said a bunch of riffs and fight and everything. And that's why to this day you'll never see a sermon by J. Frank Norris and the sword of the Lord. They couldn't get along with each other. And he was the granddaddy of the independent Baptist movement. Read his stories. Read the book. We got one of them back there in the bookstore. Read the story called uh, 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 40 Years or something like that. And the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, in a, it's a little red book like that. Or the J. Frank Norris I've known by his, by his associate pastor. So they got up there and they told him, they said, they're going to get you on the radio, preacher. And I heard Ruckman talk about in his, his church history. They said, 
on Saturday afternoon, the Baptist was going to have an hour and Norris was going to have an hour. And they was going to bring all their accusations against him. All the uh, liberal Baptists in Texas got together and they said every person, everybody in Texas, listen, back in those days, people didn't have all TV like they have now. Everybody had the radio tune on to see what J. Frank Norris was going to say. And they brought all their accusations against him. He's this. He's that. He's a crook. He shot somebody. He sure did. Man broke in on his office, tried to kill him. He shot him. He, uh, he's us. He's a this. He's a killer. He's a, he's a hypocrite. They, they charged him with everything in the book for a solid hour. And their program went off and Norris's program came on. And he come on there. And the first song was, For You I Am Praying. For you I am praying. And he preached a solid hour on the plan of salvation and never even mentioned the controversy. And they said there's thousands, thousands of people got saved that day. Because God's man told the truth. He didn't go around and try to answer every little old critic he had. Brother, he just got it. Listen, listen. We, we get emails now and I'm getting them. Lord, they come from everywhere in the world. And, and I get some bad ones. Lord, they put on me that stupid Huffington, Huffington bluff mouth, bad breath. Huff and some bad breath mouth. And, and somebody put on there and they put that I'd, I'd lost my mind. And I thought, glory to God, hallelujah. I'm screwed on the right boat, buddy. I'm telling you, if we're nuts, we're screwed on the right boat. And I like uh, what the old preacher said. He said, brother, uh, when, listen, uh, when, when us nuts are gone, you squirrels are going to have a hard time. Because there ain't going to be nothing to eat. And I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, old Norris preached that book and he wouldn't compromise with them. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This is for all the preachers and all the Christians in here. The walls are closing in on us, y'all. I'm not advocating being a smart aleck. I'm not advocating... I'm not even advocating using language the Bible don't use. you got to be careful. But I am saying this. When it comes right down to it and our back's against the wall, we're going to have to stand for what that says right there. Amen! I don't want to be a hypocrite! You say, well, the preacher, they might put you in jail. Well, they might. I hope not, and that's big talk for a little person like me. I'm telling you one thing. Some of our forefathers had, Paul went through it. They killed Jesus. They killed the apostles. They ain't, we ain't no better than they are. I'm going to say one more thing. I'm through. Well, two more. Next thing is, you know why people hate the preacher? Because he contradicts and condemns the false prophets. That's why they hate the preacher. He don't go along with all the other nice little preachers. They said, 400 preachers. They had 400 preachers. And every one of them said, go ahead, King. You can do it. And they had a band that went. <laughs> Smoke come up out of the altar. We don't use the King James Bible no more. Let's sway. You can do it. And old Micaiah stopped up and said, if you go up there, you're going to get killed. God's put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. Whew. I'm going to tell you something, people. That ain't unusual. Noah was the only man that preached that was going to be a flood. If you went and interviewed all the other preachers, ain't that right, Hire? See there? I'm right. He knows what's right. He'll tell me when I'm preaching right. Noah! What's going to happen? Flood's going to come and drown every one of you. What do you other preachers think? Well, it's not going to happen. They had them on, they had them on uh, 60 Minutes, 2020. They had them on Montel. Okay, I'm right. Uh, they had them on every TV show. They had them on... I, I mean, every one of them said, Noah is a judgmental. He's, he's, he's full of hate. He's a hate monger. He's self-righteous. He's all that. And they said, what do you think is going to happen? He said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's going to be a flood come. And you're, guess what? He was right. He was right and they were wrong. I'm going to tell you something, people. We're fixing to find out who's right. And then a bunch of these chickens that just sold out for money or a position is going to wish they'd have stayed for what was right when we turn out to be right. Amen. They condemn false prophets. The last thing I'll say and I'm through is God bears out what He says. Elijah said no rain three and a half years. And guess what? It didn't rain three and a half. The way you know a man's right is what he says comes to pass. He told Jezebel, the dog's going to lick your blood. 
Don't you think that's a little hard preaching? Don't you think that's a little judgmental? Guess what? Dogs lick their blood. God bears out what He says. Moses told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Flies! And there was flies. Frogs! There was frogs. God bears out what a real man of God says. And that's why people hate the preacher. Let's bow our heads for prayer.